If you're thinking about having a cheap meal, you're not alone. This video is going to be five ways to minimize the damage from a cheap meal and make sure that you get yourself right back on track. We'll see you right after this. All right, guys, today's video is all about how to minimize the damage um, from a cheat meal and also how to prepare yourself for a cheat meal. Now that sounds kind of funny, but I promise you, I know what I'm talking about, at least a little bit. So these are my five patented rules. Again, I really didn't come up with these, but these are my five patented rules for how to cheat properly on your diet. Now, first and foremost, I want to say this. I really, really don't think that cheating on your diet frequently is a good idea at all. I recommend that if you're going to do it, it's something that maybe you do every three months, six months, once a year is a special occasion, whatever it is, but it's going to happen from time to time. And also everybody is different. Some people can handle a little bit of a caloric surplus more often than others. You're going to have to figure that part out for yourself. But in my mind, if you're going to cheat, cheating should give you an advantage. And again, I don't even like to use the word cheat, but since everybody knows it is a cheat meal, that's what we're going to call it. So if cheating is supposed to give you an advantage, you have to look and see what that advantage is going to actually be. So in my mind, when I do finally decide that I'm going to have a cheat meal, it, the advantage for me is either I need a break just from thinking too much about food and I don't have to think too much about my food, but I might need a break. So that might be one of my advantages. Um, an advantage might be just to kind of spike things up a little bit in my body. And the third advantage for me might just be like, I just wanted to go and have a real fancy dinner and it's a once a year thing. It's a special occasion, whatever it is. So for me, those are the advantages. When you decide to do a cheat, hopefully you are weighing out the advantages and making sure that it is something that is actually going to give you an edge of some sort. I hope that makes sense. I say that a lot in my videos. I really do hope my videos make sense to you guys. Okay. So without much further ado, I'm going to tell you my five patented ways to minimize the damage of a cheat and how to do a cheat properly. So rule number one, plan your cheat meal. And what I mean by this is like, if there is a restaurant that you've been really wanting to try and you know that you're going to go there, look at the menu ahead of time, try to plan out exactly what you're going to have for your meal and then go from there. This is going to ensure that you, you capture those cravings, that you get them nipped in the bud, but also that you don't go overboard and just start ordering everything off the menu. Okay. Number two, two, limit your cheat to one meal only. Now, again, everybody's different. So you're going to have to decide for yourself. But for me, I like to do like, like we went out the other night and it was a special occasion. We knew we were going to, I planned it ahead. But what I did is I had, we had a really nice dinner and we also had dessert and I planned for that. I knew it ahead of time. It was all good. So limit it to the one meal only. If you start doing like a cheat meal and then it turns into a cheat day, eventually it turns into a cheat week slash year slash decade. And then you're looking back and wondering how did you get so far off track? So one meal plus dessert. Okay. If you want to, if you want to number three, three. Okay. Anyway, number three, drink plenty of water. You should already be drinking plenty of water anyway, but when you have a cheat meal, especially with a higher carbohydrate meal, you will retain even more water. Okay. Your body hasn't had the carbohydrates in a long time. It's going to suck them all in and you will be bloated for a while. You need to expect that it's just going to happen. You can minimize the amount of bloating, by drinking even more water than you usually do. It'll help a lot. You won't feel nearly as gnarly the next day. So drink your water. Number four, plan your next day of meals. So after you have your cheat, you should already have your plan in place for what you're going to be eating the next day to get yourself right back on track and right back in the, in the game without that plan in place, without already having an idea, it does lend itself to being like, well, I cheated a little bit last night. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit this morning, but for sure this afternoon, I'm going to be back on track. And like I said, it turns into a week, a month, a year, and you don't want that. Go ahead and plan out the next day. Just so you know, you're getting right back on track. Number five, this is my most important rule of all. And I saved it for the last cause it's my favorite one. When you cheat, cheat with a 10, a 10, do not cheat with a three. Okay. If you, again, if we talk about advantage, the advantage should be that you get something really, really good out of it. It's like better than what you've been having or something. Although I I've told you on the ketogenic diet, there's almost everything that I crave is there, but 
On the ketogenic diet, there's a lot of different substitutions. However, if you have just been craving a piece of apple pie, let's just say, get the best piece of apple pie you can. Get that 10. Do not cheat with a three. It does you no good. You'll feel so sad afterwards. And I'm going to tell you, I don't care how many of you love Pop-Tarts. I've never been a huge Pop-Tarts person, but they're okay. But if you're going to cheat, a Pop-Tart is not a 10. An Oreo cookie is probably not a 10. A fancy bakery, maybe, okay? So all this to say, those are my five <laughs> rules that I, th I work with, and I don't cheat very often. It's a very rare occasion for me, but when I do, I follow those rules. I'm back on track the next day. I know ahead of time so I don't get those guilty feelings over having a cheat meal. I already knew I was going to do it, and I don't make a habit of it. What I would advise against is cheating early on. If you are very new to your diet, whether it be a ketogenic diet or just a regular, you know, minimum, uh, lower calorie diet, don't start your cheats within two weeks of starting a diet plan. They're, your body hasn't even phased itself into the right processes yet. So cheating early absolutely does not give you any advantage and then you risk not being able to establish that really good eating habit. It takes 21 days to make or break a habit. So within two weeks, you haven't even created that habit yet. So stick with it for a while before even thinking about having a cheat meal or cheat day. Um, in order to minimize the damage, I highly recommend exercise. Exercise is good anyway, but it will help minimize the damage. And after a day of having increased carbohydrates, you're going to find you might be able to push, no, you will be able to push yourself more in physical activity the next day. So go ahead and use those extra calories, extra carbohydrates to your advantage. Do legs, do back, go for a big hike you may as well get something out of it. Again, creating that advantage, that cheat giving you the advantage. Other ways to minimize the, the damage is just don't cheat. No. <laughs> but, okay, the video is about obviously about how to minimize the damage of a cheat, but the best way I can say to minimize it is follow those rules, keep it tight, keep it to the one meal only, and then get back on track. Sometimes you need that mental break, and if this is what's going to help you to stay the long term, by all means. Anyway, if you have any questions for me, let me know. I, like I said, I don't want anybody to think that I'm a big proponent of cheating on your diet. I really find the best thing to do is just to stick with it, but I'm also a realist. I'm also a human and I understand that it's going to be tempting sometimes or sometimes you just need that break. Don't beat yourself up over it. It does you no good to beat yourself up over it. Follow my five rules. Plan your meal, limit your cheat to one meal, drink tons of water, plan your next day of eating, and cheat with a 10, a 10. Okay, guys? Thanks for spending the time with me. I'm sure there's other things that you guys might have questions about. As always, leave them below, and I will answer, the, answer you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.